How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to show you how to get your money back from your bank if they decide to freeze your account. Now this is exactly what happened to me with Citibank over here. I got this offer. You can see you can get up to $1,500 and I opted to sign up for this city priority thing which gets you about $700 for depositing 50k for about three months or so. So I put my money in and eventually they froze my account and kept me from getting my money back. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you guys through on exactly what I did to get my money back. This video is brought to you by Mint Mobile. If you're not using Mint Mobile yet, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. They have plans for as little as $15 a month on a three month trial basis. When I first switched over to Mint Mobile, I kept my original plan because I didn't know how well Mint Mobile was gonna work out. So I actually got a trial and it turns out it worked flawlessly. So then I made the permanent switch over. If you guys are interested, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below or check out this one over here, mintmobile.com forward slash bush. For Citibank, I've never had a problem with them, but let me go through what exactly happened in a very, very short story. I deposit $50,000 you're supposed to hold it in there for three months and you can get $700. And within my account, I already got the $700. Somewhere along the line, they flagged my account. They said, hey, you know, where did you get this $50,000 from? Well, I transferred it from my own personal account in the Discover uh, online savings. And then they flagged my account for some sort of fraud or something and they just froze everything. When I found this out, it was kind of months later. And then when I called them, Eventually, they led me to one department after another and then they kept me on hold for a really long time, maybe like 10, 20 minutes and then they come back and then they'd say like a few words and then they go, okay, hold on, you know, and then they put me on hold for a little bit longer and then eventually they sent me to some fraud department and then they read me a script saying that, okay, we're immediately gonna close your accounts. And I wanted to say, hey, what's gonna happen to all of my money? But before they even responded, they just hung up on me. This is the first time. The second time, same thing happened to me. They read me yet another script. It was slightly different saying that the money that I have in there, they're going to send it back to me within 30 to 60 days. But 30 to 60 days of holding $50,000, it's a lot to myself and I need access to this money so that I can actually, you know, pay bills, do whatever I need with it, you know, invest or whatnot. So I got really frustrated and I actually went into a physical bank myself, bringing two forms of ID. I'm like, hey, you know, I want to close my account. I just want to close it here and now. I can prove who I am with my passport, with my driver's license or whatever. I brought multiple forms of ID and the people there had to call in to their headquarters, their fraud department or whatever they said, they cannot unlock my account unless the people who unlocked it at their headquarters unlock it themselves. So the people at the branch has no power to just close my account and give me my money back. So this is absolutely ridiculous to me. So eventually after three or four tries, right? One try calling them, second try calling them, and then I went into an actual physical bank. And then I think the fourth try, I called them again. And, you know, yet again, they hung up on me. So after all this, I just feel like, you know, I'm getting nowhere with them. They cannot verify my identity for some weird reason. And so I search online. Eventually, I found a government agency called the Office of the Controller of the Currency. I have no idea that this thing even existed. I know Better Business Bureau, I know uh, consumer affairs or whatnot, but this office of the controller of the currency is completely brand new to me. Basically what I did is I filed a complaint with this agency. It's part of the consumer complaints division. And then you can see over here, help with my bank.gov. And then if you click through on there, on the top right corner of this page, you can click file a complaint. And of course you gotta make sure if you're doing this, you definitely are not doing anything illegal for myself. Everything was completely legit. The $50,000 was from my savings account and it was completely under my name. So make sure that if you're filing a complaint, of course you're not doing anything underhanded or anything. This is completely like white hat or whatever. So I filed the complaint, I know that I am being wrong. So then 
I gave them all my information to help with my bank.gov. And I assume when you do this, they're going to send a very stern letter to Citibank. You have to tell them which bank that you're dealing with, what exactly happened. I just told you this whole story. This is exactly what I wrote in my uh, complaint form. And I assume they then write a very stern letter to Citibank and saying, hey, you know, this happened. What's going on? Right? And I think that this agency, it's a government agency, it regulates the banks and stuff. So if they see all this wrongdoing, they're not gonna like it very much. And I don't know exactly what kind of powers they have. Maybe if they, you know, refuse to resolve this because this is not exactly any kind of fraud at all, then maybe they have to, you know, pay a fine or something. And they definitely don't wanna pay any kind of huge fines. I'm not exactly sure what leverage they exactly have but after i submitted the complaint i actually got a letter from citibank saying oh my gosh you know sorry whatever all of your accounts are unfrozen now um this took about two and a half to three weeks or so so uh it still takes a little bit of time it's actually better than the 30 to 60 days that they're gonna hold on to my money so as soon as you know um, you did everything that you can to try to get your money out. And if they refuse, and if you know you're in the right, then you can go submit this co complaint. All in all, I kept my money with them for over three months. Um, I think it went over by about one or two months or so. So they held my money for this much longer. Um, I plan to put my $50,000 in there for exactly three months. I would have used this money for investing or whatnot or churn another bank account. Through this whole experience, it's kind of nerve wracking because I had $50,000 with some bank that refused to give me my money back. So, you know, for those of you out there that are in the same situation, the office of the controller of the currency is your place to go for this type of complaints to try to get your money back. I did get my $700 uh, in reward bonus because I did everything by the book. I left my money in there for the exact perfect time before I closed my account. Now that I have access to my money again, I immediately transferred all my money back to my Discover Savings account. I've closed my Citibank account. I'm not too mad about Citibank or whatnot. I understand why they have to do this flag. But I also think that they could have easily verified all this because, you know, after they sent the letter, all of a sudden everything magically opens up again. So this is kind of weird. I don't know if they're holding on to my money for whatever reason. They don't like me churning the bank account or whatnot. But the reason for them to freeze my account was actually they did not see a name listed on my Discover account on the transfer in. So I don't really understand what this was all about because if they want to verify my name, they can probably go to Discover Bank and say, hey, you know, we have this bank account. Is this under the same name as the name with them, right? I understand they don't want to ask about a bank account and say, what name is that, right? Because they don't want to release any kind of personal, personal information associated with a bank account number. But if they have a bank account number and a name they want to correlate to, I feel like they could just go to the different bank. Being Citibank, they can call Discover Bank and say, this bank account number with this name, is this correct? Is this under the same name as what we have? I think they could have easily verified this and you know avoid all this, you know, freezing account or whatnot. So I do think there is some kind of weirdness going on. They did not actually have to freeze my account because I've done this with many different banks because there's some sort of sign up bonus or whatnot. Uh, this is the first time that's ever happened. And this is the first time I've had so much trouble with Citibank. Hopefully my experience would kind of help you guys out if you are stuck with a bank where they're, you know, they just froze it and they refuse to give you your money back. Uh, just try this out. It really does work. Again, if you guys are interested in signing up for Mint Mobile, it can save you a lot of money. It works very, very well. It has 4G LTE, 5G. You can bring your own phone. It works and it's really low cost. Check out my referral link down in the video description below. Click that like button and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.